Hey, what is going on, Capricorns? Butch Tarot here. I'm going to do your one week read. It is a general read, so it may not resonate with everyone. Uh, it is for your sun, moon, rising, and your Venus. For all you cross watchers, roles can be reversed. Always feel free to comment down below. Um, I'm going to be using the Everyday Witch. And with all that being said, let's get it. Universe. What message do we have for Capricorns? What can we see for Capricorns? All right, Capricorns. So the first thing I see, I mean, this is, this is definitely someone that you already know. And I feel like this is someone you have a connection with already. Now, for some of you, this is someone that you've already, you know, you, for some of you, this is someone that this may have already ended. For others, this is something that's coming to an end. You know, I just feel like with this person, I mean, I do see the reason why I say it may be something that already ended because I feel like this, we got that Ace of Wands, that reconciliation. I feel like this person is trying to get back with you. And like I said, for others, it could be someone that they already kind of feel you letting them go. So they're trying to fix it uh, I feel a lot of hot and cold energy with this person you know I feel like this person doesn't and you know didn't really put up an effort you know they didn't really show up for you they didn't put in the work and there's this hot and cold energy that I feel you know it always felt like they were holding back it always felt like they had secrets and I feel like they do you know I, I feel like this person I mean, we have the Knight of Wands playing games. You know, I, I, I feel like this person, honestly, I feel like they needed you. I feel like they still need you. But it's for their own gain. You know, I, I don't feel like this person wants or loves you. I feel like they need you. And I feel like there's a lot of, you know, not a lot of trust with this person. Like I said, I mean, we have the Queen of Swords in reverse. So I feel like you don't, you know, they're hiding something from you. You just don't know what it is or how deep that rabbit hole goes. You know, I feel like when you first met this person, you saw potential. But I feel like they let you down every time you gave them the opportunity. You know, I feel like this person has a lot on their plate. I feel like a lot of imbalance in this person. You know, with the Two of Pentacles, having a lot on your plate, having more than you can deal with. You know, with that, it's that feeling of defeat, feeling like you can't handle it. You know, and I feel like that kind of sums up the, the history of this person. They can't handle it. They can but they think they can't, so they don't. You know, I, I, I feel like with this person, I mean, I, 
I don't feel like you're on the same on the same page. I don't feel like you ever really were on the same page. I feel like you wanted to be on the same page and you're hoping that it would get there. But I feel like it was like a bad investment that just keeps getting worse. It's like that movie, The Money Pit, where the guy buys the house because he thinks it's a good deal and, you know, thinks he's going to turn around and make something miraculous out of this low investment. But every time you turn around, something else goes wrong. And it's how long do you hold on to this? Now, I know that's probably not the greatest metaphor because eventually he figured it out. But with this, I, like I said, I feel like this is someone that um, they'll use everything they can against you. You know, they'll use their your feelings for them against against you. And, you know, they, they'll bring up the good times. They'll, you know, make promises, but it's all empty. You know, it's, like I said, that Knight of Wands in reverse, the player energy. We have the Magician in reverse, the Trickster energy. You know, this person with the King of Swords, I feel like they think they're smarter than they really are. And they think they can outsmart you. But at the end of the day, they're still closed off. You know, there's still that self-imposed prison. And I'm not saying this person will never get better. I'm just saying they're not going to get better with any help from you. You know, that just makes them worse. You know, I, I feel like they talk a good game, but they don't show up. That You know, they can tell you and make promises and they can say whatever they want to say, but they're never going to do that, you know, under your protection. You know, under your nurturing. You know, they got to find their own way. And they're scared because they don't want to lose you because they know they can't do it on their own with that nine of pentacles in reverse. They know, or they don't, I keep saying they know, they think they know, but I feel like, honestly, I know this is kind of not the greatest read and probably not what you, exactly what you want to hear, but I feel like this person has the potential you thought they did. They just don't see it yet, so they can't live up to it. You know, they need to see it for themselves and they're not seeing it for themselves. You know, it, it's, they want you to enable them. But emotionally, I feel like they're very immature. You know, like I said, they're trying to sell you something that, you know, sell you a dream. But I mean, I feel like you already know. I feel like this is more just confirmation because we're the high priests. I feel like you already know what I'm saying. And I feel like that's part of the reason why... You know, you, you kind of distance yourself from this person. But like I said, if this is a past person, an ex, they're trying to come back. If this is someone that, um, you know, it, it's kind of slipping away. They're trying to get a better grip. I mean, they need you. Now, we also have the Knight of Swords, so it's a very quick moving energy, and that's... I don't, I, it's synonymous with that magician. You know, like the real magician, not the magician in the tarot deck, but the real magician. It's a sleight of hand. They show you what you want to see. They show you something that, you know, is remarkable. They show you something that looks like magic. They say, they, they show you this, they show you that, but back here they're doing some other shit. So they're over here and they're doing some bad shit over here and they're doing some stupid shit over here while they're over here trying to get you to look here. Because they don't want you to see what's going on in the background. You know, there's a lot of empty promises coming from this person. And when I say they don't love you, I, I feel like they don't love you the way you need to be loved. You know, in their mind, in some twisted way, I, I, I mean, I feel like they do feel love towards you. But not enough for this person to, to smarten up. I mean, I feel like all I see is this person trying to manipulate and I feel like if even if you let them have that opening where they you know they spill their lies they make their promises um, you know they remind you of the good times they remind you of the uh, of the connection that you had you know you, they remind you in ways that you are connected when that doesn't work I feel like then that's st that starts this downward spiral of gaslighting you know blaming you accusing you 
And I feel like it's a cycle that it will continue as long as you allow it to continue. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, I feel like this person needs to figure it out for themselves. And I don't feel like there's anything you can do to make them do that any quicker. You know, I feel like this person's dealing with some shit. Like I said, they got a lot on their plate. I mean, they got to learn. It's not about gaining your trust. It's about trusting in themselves. Because you did see potential in this person. I, I feel like that's the only reason this ever started. You saw the potential. But like I said, you can see potential all you want. Until they see it. Until they live up to it. What are they bringing to you? You know, they're not putting in the work. They're not showing up. There's this hot and cold energy. There's this feeling like they're, they're hiding shit from you. You know, and like I said, I mean, I feel like this person needs to learn to trust themselves because right now, uh, it's not someone you can trust and they can't trust themselves either. And I feel like they need to see this in a different perspective. And sometimes we just need tough love. You know, I feel like, like I said, I, I, I feel like for some of you, this is an ex that you've already, you know, taken that step away from. Uh, for others, this is your your bags are packed at the door, but you haven't you haven't left yet. But either way, I I feel like they need they need to figure this out. And right now, it's it's kind of like someone. You know, it, it, it's it's like someone kind of drowning, and 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 uh, the only thing you trying to help them is going to accomplish is you're going to drown too. You know, this person needs to learn to swim. And that's just a metaphor. You know, if they're physically drowning, don't let them drown. But <laughs> but like I said, things can always change. Energies always change. This could be the best thing for you and the best thing for them. I mean, honestly, I feel like it is the best thing for you. Um, in, 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 the, in, in the meantime... But this is up to you. Like I said, I mean, it's, I'm just telling you what I see. What you do with that is completely up to you. Um, you know, nobody knows your life better than you do. But what I see is just someone that's, you know, closed off, they're defeated and, you know, they got a lot on their plate and they're trying to convince you that they don't. They're trying to convince you of this and that and the other thing, but at the end of the day, just someone really emotionally immature. You know, I, I don't feel like they're very, very self-aware. And I feel like they have a lot of growing up to do. You know, but like I said, it doesn't mean they won't be that person you thought they were going to be. I just don't think they're going to get that and get that with you next to them. You know, sometimes it's tough love and like that old saying goes... Um, sometimes you gotta let them go and if they come back, they're yours. I mean, this person's coming back with a, with a sales pitch, but, you know, I, I think they need to prioritize, prioritize their own life. They learn, need to learn to trust themselves. They need to learn to love themselves and they need to learn, um, no one's gonna bail them out. You know, especially when they don't give anything into it. And, and that's another thing. I mean, this person isn't giving anything to this connection. You know, they're playing games. They're manipulating. You know, they're even trying to outsmart you. And it's just, it's insulting. It's, it insults your intelligence. I mean, like I said, there is, I do feel some love in this. You know, and I feel like it's not something that's easily walked away from. But I feel like, you, you know, honestly, I, this isn't how you treat someone that you love. And if they do truly care about you, you know, they'll find their way back to you and, and come correct. Because right now it's not correct. They're not fixed. They're not different. Even if they try to convince you of that, I don't feel like anything's changed. I feel like they're almost getting worse. You know, I feel this like downward spiral. And that's the thing in life. Sometimes we got to hit rock bottom. You know, we got to start from the bottom. 
You know, and it's not easy when you care about someone to let them hit rock bottom, but sometimes that's the only way they're going to learn. Anyway, uh, with this person, um, you know, we do have some Taurus and Virgo. You know, Aquarius and Libra. I do feel some Scorpio, some Cancer, some Sagittarius as well. You know, it's, I know it's not, I, I mean, I've told this story before, you know, my, my, uh, my older brother, he's 12 years older than me. And, um, and this isn't completely relevant. It's just kind of like an idea of, anyway, you'll get it when I'm done. Um, anyone that doesn't want to listen, that's the end of the read. And I appreciate you showing up and, and watching, um, for everybody else that actually enjoys the stories. Here we go. And like I said, you probably heard it before. Cause I think I told it before. Um, so my brother was suffered from addiction and, you know, I love my brother. You know, I always looked up to him. He was like a second father to me because he's quite a bit older than me and stuff. And he got into, to alcohol severely. Um, I remember being 12, 13 years old and the local bar would get me to come walk down and help him home. He'd be passed in sometimes in the bar, you know, and other times he'd be passed in somewhere and, and we we're from a small town. So people knew, people know everybody in my town. So they always called the house and they always call for me. And like my dad would, my dad kind of washed his hands of it because he was just tired of it. My dad's all about tough love. And I think that's the only love he, he actually shows, but, um, I would always show up, you know, if he, was drinking and he called me and he was out somewhere at a party or something. He's like, you know, he'd be like, can you come get me? When, when I got my license, I used to go pick him up all the time. And, you know, when he needed money, I'd, I'd help him out. And then I, I eventually went to see someone that a specialist that helps the family with the person with the addiction. And the girl that I met with, she was really nice and she was really, really helpful. She said, as long as there's someone there answering the phone, he'll keep calling. And, you know, me and my mom were the biggest ones for helping him out and just always showing up and always putting our lives second for him. And it was tough at first, but I, I was like, you know what? You know, I love you. Um, but now it's time for you to be, love yourself and love us. Show, show us that. So I stopped answering the phone or I'd answer the phone. And I'd say, no, I can't come get you. I guess I'm doing stuff. I'm busy. You know, I can't. Or he'd ask for money and I'm like, no. Even though I had it, I was like, no, I can't. And then it started to the point where, you know, he got really, you know, he'd get hateful with me. Tell me like, you know, I don't love him and using all those things against me. And so I stopped answering the phone altogether. And this went on for years, like me enabling and went on for years. But once I put my foot down and once I got my mom to put her foot down, I'm telling you, it was, it was life changing for him. You know, when we stopped answering the phone, something clicked in him and he, I mean, he's been doing amazing for years now. You know, he's really got his life together, you know, and, and it was hard. It was hard to watch someone you love that you knew you could help or you knew that you could give them what they were asking for and saying no to them. It was hard, but it was worth it in the long run because he got his shit together, you know, and like I said, there was times when he left messages. I didn't answer the phone. He left messages and it broke my heart. You know, I wanted to give in. I wanted to go get him. But he needed to know that we weren't putting over the shit anymore. You know, he needed to know 
that he had to get his shit together. You know, I'd give him a place to stay when his girlfriend kicked him out. I, you know what I mean? Like, all these things. And I feel like... And I'm telling you, it was a, it, when I say it was a quick change, it wasn't overnight. It, it, it was a few months before he, you know, showed up one day at my house. He said, listen, I got a problem, man. And I, I know I got to get I gotta get it fixed. You know, I need to get it fixed. And I'm like, well, get it fixed, man. And then come see me. And I'll always be here for you. But... I won't be here for you and I won't be answering the phone as long as you're dealing with this bullshit that, you know, you got going on. And he's like, you know, and I ended up taking the rehab and he went through the, you know, the whole re rehab program and, you know, he really got his life together and he's doing good now. And the funny thing is, is it, he still has drinks from now on. He's not, he's not completely sober. He still has drinks from now on, but he's not like he was. And he, you know, he said because he went to therapy and he realized that he was drinking before because of depression. And now that he doesn't have the depression, he doesn't feel the need to over drink. You know, it's fascinating when you learn how, you know, people just think that people just are alcoholics or drug addicts because they want to be or because they enjoy it. It's so much deeper than that. But the point of the story, like I said, the relevance to this story is sometimes the best help you can give is no help. Sometimes the best thing you can do is force someone to do it for themselves. Anyway, be good. Take care. Stay safe.